The Canucks make even more roster changes with the official call-up of Eric Brandstrom and the unfortunate reassignment of Atu Ratu back down to Abbotsford. So we're going to take a look at the implications of these changes and how they're going to affect the Canucks going forward. We're going to be breaking down all of that in this episode of Canucks Digest, but first make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any all updates surrounding the Canucks as we head through this road trip. And with that, let's hop into the first topic of the day, which is Brandstrom officially recalled and the implications. So we see here in a tweet from the team that general manager Patrick Alvin announced today that defenseman Eric Brandstrom has been recalled from Abbotsford and that defenseman Derek Forbert has left the team for personal reasons. Don, Rick Dollywell also followed up with it saying that, yes, he left them for personal reasons. Doesn't sound long-term, could be back in a few days. And just quickly touching on what Alvin said at the signing of Forbert as well. Derek gives us another big blue liner who has very good size and reach. He defends well in his own end and works extremely hard in winning one-on-one -on -one puck battles and defending the front of the net. He plays with an edge and will be make our back end better. Hopefully he is able to work through what he is going through right now. We wish nothing but the best for him and that he's back on the ice as soon as possible. But with this, we do have the, the calling up of Eric Brandstrom. We covered it in our last video, how key he would be to this Vancouver Canucks defense if he is given the opportunity to start. We saw that he made the tri trip to Florida to play uh, to practice with them as they play the Panthers tonight. And with the projected lineups from Daily Faceoff, it looks like Eric Brandstrom is going to be on that third defensive pairing, making his debut for the Canucks. I know I'm very excited to see what he's going to do especially with this defensive core that is seemingly going to be rotating in and out throughout the rest of the year as far as the third pairing goes. We see Noah Juleson getting another start as well, where Vinny D'Arnais is again another healthy scratch. So he's eventually going to work his way back into the lineup because of all that is going on with the Canucks defense right now. It seems like there's always going to be so much drama with the Canucks, it seems like this season, whether it's goalies, whether it's forwards not performing, or whether it's defensemen just having to find their chemistry and find that perfect third pairing so that we can have a solid three pairings throughout the entire Canucks defensive core. But it's going to be an interesting thing to see when how far Derek Forber is going to be away for the Canucks, when he's going to come back. But Brandstrom is going to bring a certain edge to this Canucks defense that they don't have yet. We showed in the clip yesterday how explosive he was at creating opportunities in the AHL. If he can translate that to the NHL, maybe this gives the Canucks the defensive spark they need and just the offensive spark they've needed. We haven't seen much offense since the first period of our first game. We're going to touch on what the, some of the implications of that in a second. But as far as on defense, if Branstrom can be one of those more offensive defenders like Quinn Hughes, like Philip Peronik, we touched on it yesterday on how he could be one of those guys to take the edge off of those guys so that they're not getting so much ice time and getting overworked and playing 26, 27, or even 31 minutes a game. Branstrom can cut into that a little bit or to make sure that that third defensive pairing is solid so that you're not trying to have to rush your top pair back on the ice just so that the second pair can go on after them. It's going to provide a little bit of rest for Heronic and Hughes, and that's going to be big because we do need those guys performing and firing on all cylinders, not getting too tired, not getting overworked or getting hurt like we saw with Demko last year and like we've seen in the past with the Canucks. But what do you guys think about Branstrom being called up? Are you excited to see how he does in this game against Florida? I know I am. It's going to be interesting to see what the final lineups are going to be. I know we're pulling from daily faceoffs projected ones, but before the game comes out, we are going to have a better idea of what the lineups are going to look like. But let us know what you guys think down below. But that's going to lead us into our second topic today, which is Atu Ratu reassigned to Abbotsford. So we hear, see here from the team as well, Alvin announced today that forward Atu Ratu has been assigned to Abbotsford is very unfortunate because many fans were very excited to see what he was going to be able to do as a starter on this Vancouver Canucks roster to start the year. But it seems like he's going to be relegated to the same role that Archdeep Baines, Jonathan Lecker, Mackey, and some others are going to be relegated to. Niels Almond being another one of them where they're going to get their chances throughout the year sprinkled in. But as far as heavy starting time, they are just not going to get that. It's not going to be in the cards. And as far as Ratu's production to start the year, he started the season with familiar faces he slotted alongside Hoaglander and Garland. Ratu nabbed his first assist of the season in the opening frame against the Calgary Flames off the stick of Garland. However, despite his 60.9% on the faceoff circle, he struggled to find consistent ice time, averaging 941 minutes per game, and was sent to Abbotsford. So yes, he hasn't gotten the time on ice he's needed, but that 60% from the faceoff circle is pretty darn good. I think he's done really well in the faceoff circle, so that's going to be something that might be an asset for Vancouver going forward. It's just 
right now they're in a state where they need to try anything to see what can work. They need to find something that just eventually sticks. And if Ratu is a face-off guy that they are able to implement later on in the season, maybe towards playoff time or after the All-Star break when guys are getting a little tired, we don't want to expense all of the guys that we have on their younger, on the Abbotsford roster just so that they can just get in playing time early on in the season it's best to save those guys for when you need them and when they're ready to just shine in their moment i think if ratu makes his moment selected where vancouver is not giving him so many starts a year but they're making sure that if he is perform if he is playing in those games he's making the most of those opportunities and trying to perform and the face-off circle definitely being one of them so if he's getting limited starts heading forward throughout the rest of the year barring injuries hopefully those don't happen anymore for the canucks but if he's having to step in, maybe we see that faceoff percentage go up just a little bit. Maybe it goes up to 65 or 70. Who knows? We know JT Miller is a great faceoff guy. We know Teddy Bluger is good in the faceoff circle. So we do have some solid center depth for the Canucks. So Ratu is a great addition to that whenever they need him. But this is a time where the Canucks just need to find something that sticks. And as far as the forward core... There's already been a lot of lineup shuffling through the first three games of the season. Every forward line outside of the third line has changed since opening night. Now the Canucks third line will have a new faceoff man, Teddy Bluger or Pew Suter. Both players have one point this season, Bluger in three games, Suter in two. So this is going to be interesting to see what the Canucks do as well because they've seen so many changes in the forwards. We see here in the projected lineups from Daily Faceoff for the game tonight, Archie Baines is still on that top line. Would love to see it potentially swap with Hoaglander and put him down at that and put Baines down on that third line. See how it does with Garland. But again, JT Miller likes playing with him. But I think this is something that where the top six has changed a lot. The third line hasn't really changed, but now it's going to change up a little bit. Key for Sherwood is going to be nice. It's amazing to see Daniel Sprong back in the lineup, though, especially playing with Kiefer Sherwood. I think that's going to be a very well-balanced fourth line. It's going to be a bigger line, so I think that's going to give our bigger, our top line and our top two lines, I should say, a bit more rest. Where the third line has been performing, Garland has been solid, Hoglander has been solid, Pew Suter is getting back from that injury as well. He is going to be a solid person at center. So with this, the Canucks almost are relying on their third and fourth line to get a bit more in there to get those bit main guys some rest. I think Pedersen definitely needs something different. Maybe you put Hoaglander up to the second line instead, drop Dan Han Danton Heinen sorry, down to that third line. Jake DeBrusque, put him on the first line, swap Brock Besser. I know Miller and Besser are a dream combo. But if you need to get somebody going, you need to get JT Miller going, maybe you swap Besser onto that line with Petey. They haven't played together in a little bit. So if you put Jake DeBrusque on there, maybe he gets Miller going. I think this is a time where Vancouver is almost focused on trying to make these Abbotsford guys fit into this roster instead of trying to shuffle around their top guys. If they're able to shuffle around their top guys, maybe they can get something going, find new chemistry on other lines. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I definitely agree with that. But if it ain't working... Sometimes you got to break it to refix it. So maybe this is what the Canucks have to do with their top six. I know with their core four, it's definitely not been up to par as far as late. I know last video we broke down how their point totals have fared so far in the first three games this year compared to the first three games last year. And the production is literally cut in half. So that's going to be something to monitor going forward. Maybe there's some changes as far as the top four, as far as what we see as far as in the lines and what the lineups look like. But let us know what you guys think down below on those ones. But another person that did speak out on the offensive struggles was Elias Pettersson. He finally spoke to the media on talking about we on their offensive struggles. We have to play harder. We got to eliminate time for opponents with the puck. Just be tougher all over the ice. That's something that they're definitely going to need tonight in Florida, in Sunrise, against the defending Stanley Cup champions. If we can strike first, we were the best at that last year. We were the best at scoring first, so we were always up playing from ahead until teams caught up to us. If we can do that against Florida, that's going to be huge because not only just in general terms, but also what it would mean for this team. We haven't won a game yet. We're on a road trip. It's game two of a road trip. So if we can get a win here against the defending Stanley Cup champions, that's something that can ride us high into a revenge game against Philly on the weekend. But what do you guys think on Patterson's comments? Do you wish that he had said something about his own offensive struggles? Or do you just think that he's going to just find it at some point? I know a lot of guys are in the comments saying that, hey, we haven't seen too much from PD. We, we, maybe he is the problem. I'm not sure we're ready to rule that as a factor yet. It's, again, it's still early in the season. He can still wake up and get going. I have faith that he's going to turn it around at some point. But again, it is going to be something to monitor throughout the season. And talk it after the Tampa Bay game. Just kept it simple. He said, we need some guys to pick it up. Maybe he was talking about PD. Maybe he was talking about Biller. Maybe he was talking about Besser. But with your top four guys... 
They need to be your goal scorers. They need to be your point getters. And we haven't seen that from these guys. Quinn Hughes has been a little bit quiet even too. So even I know everyone wants to single out Pedersen. They all want to jump on Pedersen because it's just been the easy target. He's got the big contract. He's got the star power. There is the Swedish element that people in the comments have been addressing as well. But again, look at JT Miller. Look at Brock Besser. Look at Quinn Hughes. The production just hasn't been there across the board for the Canucks. It's not just Petey. It's not just one guy. It's the entire team. This is a team where they have more than one skater on the ice. You have more. You have four guys, four forwards on the ice, at, or five guys on the ice at a time, sorry. Many oftentimes it has been four, though, for the Canucks because of how we've been in the box a lot lately. But again, this is a team where everyone has to play their part. Everyone has to contribute. So it's not just one player. It doesn't just ride on one player. If anything, you've, the only time it rides on one player is if it's a morale booster, if a player is missing and you play that game for them, like the Canucks did, for, tried to do for Brock Besser last year, like they did or have been trying to do for Dakota Joshua. If they can rally the troops for this game, and PD has a great game, I don't doubt that a lot of people are going to start getting a little bit quiet because I think at some point we're going to see these four guys start to get points on the board again. Miller's going to start scoring. Besser's going to start scoring. Hughes is going to start scoring and providing opportunities. Hironic is going to start get going because those guys are the top two defensemen in the league and they need to start playing like it so again it's not just one player it's the entire team so hopefully tonight is the first win that this team does get but what do you guys think down in the comments what do you guys think will be the final score of the game tonight against florida would love to hear what you guys have to say but that's going to lead us into our final topic of the day which is everyone's favorite topic and that is comments of the day and we see here from madam kirk saying great channel i'm going to buy you a ticket to a canucks game sometime would love that. We love the support from the fans, and that would be a wonderful gift. I know Mark is planning on going out there at some point. I would definitely love to go out there with Mark or just on my own at some point. And we're going to have Mark coming to Windsor so that we can go to the Detroit Red Wings game when the Canucks are in the Motor City. So we're going to be getting to more games. It's just going to take a little bit of time. We're still in our we're in our second year right now, or entering our second year that the channel has been around. So we're definitely going to bring more and more things for you guys, but we appreciate all the support and all the messages and all the gifts that you guys want to have give to give to us. We appreciate it all. Can't thank you guys enough for the support, but that's going to do it for this episode of Canucks Digest. I've been your host, Griffin. Take care.